Have you ever just sat there listening to the undulating waves of white noise as you turn the dial of an analog radio? Have you ever lost yourself between the pulsating frequencies of energy, minuscule in nature, yet able to penetrate every inch of our being? Have you ever stopped to consider that each needle on the radio's dial range represents a possibility, an alternate reality? Is there someone, or something, trying desperately to communicate with us beyond the barrier of sound? Oxenfree, a graphic adventure game by Night School Studio, released over multiple platforms between 2016 and 2017, examines these themes. I use the term graphic adventure loosely, as the game encompasses other genres such as supernatural thriller, as well as containing a stripped down version of a point and click adventure. This unique indie title provides us with a short 5-6 to six hour adventure over the period of a night spent with students who are trapped on an island. And no, a match or a bottle of water is not going to get you through this puzzle, as this is no team building exercise. For the purposes of this review, I played Oxenfree on the PC via Steam. We play as Alex, a high school student who has joined her friends on a trip to Edwards Island where they plan to spend the night drinking, chatting, and just generally having a good time. The game opens on a ferry that is shipping us to our destination. From the get-go we are able to walk around and respond to character dialogue in real time. If you're using a controller, the X, Y, and A buttons all correspond to dialogue options that appear over Alex's head whenever she has the opportunity to respond to her comrades. You can choose to use one of the options, or not respond at all. The actions taken by you as the player will determine not only how the other characters feel toward Alex, but can also determine their fates as you travel across the expansive island in a bid to figure out just what the hell is going on. Oh, but I am getting a bit ahead of myself here. Alex is joined by Ren, Clarissa, Jonas, and Nona, a limited cast that all have different feelings toward Alex, which can change based on her responses to them. Ren is her best friend, a bit of a stoner, but also reliable even if a little bit of a jokester at times. Clarissa is cold and confrontational, and probably the least likeable of the bunch, however this is due to her perception of Alex, and actions in the past that led to the death of someone she loved. Jonas is Alex's new stepbrother. They don't know each other all that well, and Jonas only came along because he basically had nothing better to do. Finally, there's Nona. She is Clarissa's best friend and Ren's love interest, though I felt she was the least fleshed out of all the cast. At different junctures in the game, you can choose who to head toward when you are separated, and sometimes who accompanies you, which gives you a little bit of flexibility in changing things up for subsequent playthroughs. The game starts off on relatively normal terms. A bunch of teenagers decide to do something slightly illegal because they are still young and they can. Arriving at Edwards Island, they think nothing of scaling a security fence in order to access the beach beyond. As the group light a bonfire and begin to party, rumours abound of a unique phenomenon that can occur if you tune an analog radio into certain frequencies within a nearby cave. Scaling yet another fence, Alex, Ren, and Jonas decide to try it out near some rocks that have been haphazardly stacked. The radio tuner causes light to emit from an unknown source above, which perplexes the teens. After Jonas spots light further in the cave, Alex and Jonas decide to investigate it together. Deep within the recesses of the cave, Alex tunes the radio once more which forms a triangle tear in the fabric of space that lets out something sinister. Before they have time to comprehend what they just witnessed, they black out and awaken in a different location, on the island, their other friends scattered. Following this, the game becomes a harrowing nightmare as the teens are constantly plagued with visions and dumped into seemingly never-ending time loops which all act to prevent them from leaving the island. The supernatural thriller element of the game comes into play in the form of the force communicating with Alex through the radio. As the player, it is up to you to work out what's causing this communication from the beyond, and how to fix it before it's too late. The game has multiple outcomes and endings based on how you choose to deal with the different situations and scenarios that you are presented with, which allows you to experience the game slightly differently on subsequent playthroughs. I earlier suggested the similarity to a point and click adventure, though Oxenfree has no inventory system, instead relegating Alex to relying on one useful item alone. In her bid to try and figure out what is happening to them, Alex has a portable analog radio. It's useful in a couple of regards. 
First, there are a number of signboards around the island that will give you tourist information on the various monuments and establishments, should you choose to take the time to listen to them. Additionally, like in the cave, if Alex tunes the radio near a stack of rocks, she will trigger a strange broadcast which is classified as an anomaly in the menu. Some of these are really odd, and I personally didn't feel that they contributed to the narrative in any way other than being spooky, often relaying odd happenings or deaths that had occurred in locations unrelated to Edwards Island. A bit into the game, Alex will find an upgraded radio with a larger frequency dial. This radio can be used to tune into a certain station on each screen that gives clues to find letters left by a deceased estate using a likeness of the NATO phonetic alphabet. The radio can also be used to open radio locks by tuning into the correct frequency near a locked door. I felt that sometimes watching the spinning dial could become nauseating, but when playing with the controller, it vibrated whenever I was near the correct frequency, which eased this sensation. Finally, the radio must be used to tune the beings that are affecting the environment and your friends. When your friends become possessed, you can tune the radio near them to attempt to free them from the possession. I thought that the radio was an interesting mechanic, and enjoyed exploring what it could do throughout the adventure, not only by solving puzzles, but also finding the various hidden radio stations, some of which contained Morse code transmissions, adding another layer of depth. Whilst the game has a clear theme of how someone deals with guilt, I felt that sometimes this wasn't explored in enough depth. For example, when one of the characters dies in a time loop, the rest of the cast comment on it briefly and that's that. Additionally, for the number of traumatic events that they experience over the night, they never seem to exhibit any signs of PTSD, and are completely rational for most of the adventure. I would have liked to see how what they were experiencing affected their psyche in more depth. It just seemed to be too much of a light-hearted adventure, more of a coming-of-age story. So, I feel like it could have gone a little bit darker. I mean, the humour is already there to balance out the depth of darkness that the game could have gone to. Comparatively, 2016's Downfall Remake goes all in with the darkness, holding back no punches, yet incorporates humour to anchor the player and not make the experience too traumatic. The aesthetic of the game is brilliant. I love the painted art style that is brought to life with subtle light particles or swaying grasses that add depth to what would have otherwise been just something that was nice to look at. The different coloured speech bubbles that differentiate the reply options in the chosen font also help to highlight the fact that the protagonist is a child. Were the font in a more formal serif style, I don't think it would have fit so well. I also enjoyed that you never actually got to see a real representation of what was haunting the teens, only the occasional large shrouded figure with bright piercing eyes that would sometimes appear in blink and you'll miss it moments. Also, all the characters have box gaps for days, but I felt like the visual representation of them fit the theme of the narrative, and the environments perfectly. You could definitely get a feel for each character based solely on their appearance and what they were wearing. So it's clear that attention to detail was made in this regard when the characters were designed. For example, Alex's blue hair represents her rebellious cycle following the death of her brother, which mirrors a similar action taken by Chloe in Life is Strange. Ren's pierced ears represent his disagreement with the social norm, which highlight his penchant to indulge in mind-altering drugs, for example. And looking at the island itself, whilst it doesn't have different biomes, the visual representation of each of the areas is distinct, and the guide map is detailed enough so that you never have to worry about getting lost. It was very much appreciated. Musically, I feel like this game is a work of art. I love the way that the tunes were all incorporated in a way that added to the tension and mystery of the events that happened over the night. The composer, Andrew Rawman, made it his goal to make the music sound simultaneously analog and digital, which I think he achieved with the way the music and audio weaves in and out sometimes like it's on its last leg running through an old tape recorder. Of all the tracks, my favourite is called Beacon Beach. It has a sense of the unknown to it, what with the echoed beats, the unsettling underlying radio sounds, and the Morse code that when translated shows the music itself could be considered as hermetically engendered in the narrative, or that the game has broken the fourth wall and drawn you as the player into the time loop. Additionally, all of the dialogue is voiced, and I felt like the voice cast did an excellent job with the script that they were given. Of course, as I mentioned before, I would have liked to have seen a bit more existential dread and trauma, but that's not the fault of the actors themselves. But suspensions are like paid vacation, you can just do your work over. Oxenfree is an indie title that dared to try something a little different in the graphic adventure category, and I think for the most part it pulled it off. The excellently woven story is supported by the intrigue at the supernatural elements, which will keep you guessing right up to the conclusion. 
The ability to answer other characters' questions on the fly adds a little bit of pressure, but also makes the conversation seem a little more natural, even if they sometimes cut each other off. If you are a fan of short indie titles, then I would definitely recommend you check this one out if you get the chance. By the way, growing up I tended to lean more heavily toward AAA games but have recently been discovering a lot of indie titles that are also worth playing. What's your favourite indie title? Let me know in the comments and maybe I might check it out in future. This has been Venwire with a review of Oxenfree for the PC. If you enjoyed this video please feel free to like and subscribe for more indie content. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you all again next time. Take care of yourselves and bye bye for now.